I just arrived in Surabaya, Indonesia, and I'm going to be visiting an active volcano called Mount Bromo. I first heard of Mount Bromo from a friend. He told me that, hey, you can kind of get to the peak of this mountain with hardly any climbing. And I was like, my God, keywords, because I hate climbing. You get to reap all the benefits of the experience and the view minus the hard work. It's exactly my type of holiday. So I've been before, this is my second time back. Too many people have asked me what my trip details are, so I thought, hey, it was such an amazing experience. So I thought of coming back here and then taking you guys through the entire itinerary. We're now going to drive to Mount Bromo. Our hotel is about four hours away, so it's a pretty long journey. Let's go! Okay, so I finally arrived at my resort. This is the Jiwa Jawa Bromo, and I chose this resort for obvious reasons. It is beautiful. And when I searched online, this is by far the most gorgeous. Actually, there's no fight. This is the only gorgeous one. Of course, if you want to go on a budget, there are rooms available at homestays down the hill uh, for about $10 a room. But this, though, feels like a proper holiday. So after the four hour drive from the Surabaya airport, um, it's about 5 p.m. right here. There's really nothing to do because we're in the middle of nowhere. So I'm just gonna get some tea, enjoy the cool mountain air, and then rest early because the Jeep that comes to pick us up for the sunrise arrives at 3 a.m. Morning, it's 3 a.m. Waiting for our Jeep to take us to the viewpoint to check out Mount Bromo at sunrise. It's about 10 degrees right now, pretty cold considering that's only like two hours away from Singapore. I've got two layers of leggings, thermal socks. It's quite embarrassing lah, it's a Christmas sock, <laughs> so I've kept it hidden. <laughs> no street cred. From here to the sunrise point, it would be about 45 minutes by Jeep, and we're gonna be riding in the darkness. This driver would navigate through the mountain roads, dark, winding and steep with no lights. So this is like a ride that feels like you're gonna die at any point, but it's okay, you won't. Yep, this is it, hold on tight. As you can see, the mountain roads are like pitch dark. We're on a super bumpy ride. If you have a bony ass, good luck to you. And he's going at like, it feels like 80, 100 kilometers an hour in a small car on a bumpy road. It's too fast. <laughs> so we're on our way up. It's a really steep incline and this Jeep feels like it's really struggling. And I'm really hoping it doesn't break down because now's really not a good time for it to break down. Okay, so now at Love Hill, we're trying to get to the top. It's really windy, and the air is really thin. I'm not really tired, but I'm really breathless. And I'm just someone who just has zero fitness. We're climbing up the stairs, it's a clear path forged for us, but I can't see how much more stairs we have. This is as far as I can see. We still have a few more flights. So I just reached the top of Love Hill. I, I'm guessing that the cluster of volcanoes is behind me. So now we're just waiting for the sun to rise. Also a little tip from our driver, he said to come here during the weekdays because there's a long flight of steps up here. If you come here during the weekend, it will be like a stop start on the stairs itself. So. Today is considered to be a pretty uncrowded day. But yet, there's still quite a lot of people. It is, after all, Bromo. Just caught the sunrise, it's about five. 30 right now. We're gonna head down Love Hill to the Jeep and go to the foot of Mount Bromo. The origin of the smoke, that's where we're gonna be headed. There's not much people left as you can see. They know where the good stuff is and we need to head there. Okay, so we're going back down now. Definitely not as daunting or torturous as the uphill climb. A poor driver had to climb up. He had to climb up because he had to tell us to hurry because we need to get to the crater. I feel so bad for him. Sorry, Nanda! <laughs> it looks like death, he wants to kill me. Back in the Jeep, we're heading to the base of Mount Bromo right now. Sun's up, so it's getting a bit warmer. I think it should be about like 15 degrees right now. And it will get warmer because we're going to be climbing up a whole lot of steps. We just got here and we're just surrounded by horses. We're going to cross a sea of sand. This is a surrounding area of the crater. You could choose to walk if you want, but if you could flag a horse down, why not, right? It's about 200,000 rupiah. What is that, 20 bucks? 
It's totally worth it. Return. The horses aren't just going to take us across the plane. It's going to take us up as well to the foot of the crater. Hell yeah. The horse over walking. What I got was a cart with um, Ito on it. Apparently that's his name. Right, Ito? Ito. Ito. <laughs> so I'm going to try to mount this horse right now. Oh my god, I am so scared getting up the horse. Slowly. Okay. Okay. <sighs> okay, okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't move. Don't move, don't move. It's like really sandy, so I gotta get this up. I don't know why my butt feels cramped already. Like I'm a bit tired. I don't know how people in medieval times travel by horse. Okay, so right about now, I feel really bad for the people who are on foot. Can you see how much sand we're kicking in their faces? Okay. Okay, thank you. We're at the foot of the steps to the crater and we need to climb all those stairs. Some people have said it's 250, 270, but trust me, after 10 steps, you stop counting. Already I feel like breathless, even though I'm not tired because the air is pretty thin up here. So let's start. We only have 45 minutes to do this because the horse guy didn't want to wait too long. Okay, rest stop. We're at the halfway point right now, resting. Uh, this is the first time I'm climbing up with a bag. Before I was kind of like freehand. It's hurting my chest right now. Bear in mind, I have my stamina is shit. I can't even climb a flight of stairs without going breathless. So if I can do this, so can you. And you know, most people who hike mountains, they hike for hours and days even. This is chicken shit compared to that. And when I say no climbing, this is what I mean. With just a little bit of endurance, a bit of push, you can complete this flight of stairs, I think, in about 20 minutes. That's all right. Hang on, hang on. We're at the edge of the crater right here. South of the fighter jet. Really loud. This is an active volcano after all. It's particularly smoky today, so you can't really see the sulfur. irritating me up here. It's just that the sulfur vapors can burn your eyes and I'm feeling a bit of that right now. Okay, so we're gonna head back down now to our horse because our driver did give us a time of 45 minutes. I think we've maxed that. Let's go. It's really slippery going down so be really careful. Yeah, we're heading back to the hotel right now. Ah, come look at you. Oh, you just see your horse's feet. <laughs> So we're back to the Jeep right now. One final tip I have for you if you're planning to come to Bromo is to be over-prepared. Because this is my second time here and the weather conditions are so different from when I was here the first. It's super windy today, resulting in a lot of sand flying around. It's a bit of a mini sandstorm. Don't play hero. Just bring a scarf or a mask, uh, wrap up, bring gloves. Because you never know when the wind hits, it gets pretty damn cold. And bring water. I hate drinking water, but I consume so much on this trip. Better be safe than sorry lah. Okay, so we're back in Surabaya and oh my god, after a whole morning of climbing with sand in our hair, I need to feel human again. So I'm in a hair salon right now and I'm about to embark on a journey known as the cream bath. This is available in most hair salons across Indonesia. It's where they give you a cream treatment, they apply cream all over your head and then they massage your head. was amazing. <laughs> she really dug into my scalp. I feel like reborn. Now it's time for dinner and this is the one place I dream about. I would totally fly back to Surabaya for this. It's President Ayam, the best fried chicken ever. End of the day, I like to have dinner here at Ayam Goreng President. As you can see, the entire menu is in Indonesian. I don't know how to read this, so I'm just gonna wait for someone who can speak English to tell me what to order. But essentially, this place is just known for its fried chicken. I don't even eat breast meat, but the breast meat here, oh my god, it's to die for. It says a lot. So the setting is very local. As you can see, a lot of locals here. You hardly see any tourists. 
it's not really a restaurant, it's kind of by the roadside. And if you come during the day, you probably see flies buzzing around the food. Do not let that deter you. I looked past that, went in and got treated. I don't know what's so good about this, I think it's just the secret spices that they marinate in. On the way in, you see all the raw chickens sitting in some dubious looking marinade paste. And it's only deep fried upon order. And it's just deep fried to perfection. Oh, it's damn hot. Whoa. Never mind, I'll just wait. <laughs> Gotta eat with your hands lah. Mm. The star is definitely chicken. So tender it falls apart. So this is actually kampong chicken. They're allowed to run free. They're smaller in size. And they really, really taste like chicken. None of that antibiotic shit you get in the market. This one you can really taste the game. Mm. So we've come to the end of the trip. Um, this is my final night in Surabaya before we fly back to Singapore the next morning. The reason why I was so inclined to come on this trip is because it's a whole new experience, so far removed from what you're used to in Singapore. And it's only two hours away. Just think, desert, horses, active volcano, very little climbing, winter wear, why not? And you're gonna get great photos, whether you're there for Instagram or for the whole experience because you wanna be closer to nature, it ticks all the boxes. Of course, I've shot a lot of photos. If you want to check them out, you can go to my hashtag on Instagram. It's Roz in Surabaya. Of course, my Instagram account is at HeyRoz. And don't forget to follow Click Network. Download the app to watch the episodes up to a month ahead of their release on YouTube. And don't forget to follow us on socials as well. If you prefer to watch us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button below. Bye.